I am so glad because I've been in trouble after this last week if we did. But I'm going to try again. That's the one thing about the wagon. It's always still there. You can always get up and get back on it. You can always get back on the wagon. So I am on the wagon of pleasing God and being grateful. And while the grateful part is simple, because all I have to do is open my eyes in the morning and I know I have a reason to be grateful. Yeah. But the pleasing God part, in all of our words, actions, deeds, and thoughts. Yeah. Help God, <laughs> help. Our announcements immediately following after service today that we are having a meeting Pastor Boyce and I have a meeting with all the women of the Tri-City Charge right here in the sanctuary. All women are invited. Following the women's meeting, um, the Sunday school will take place. We are still looking at John 6, and we'll be looking at verses 13 through 15. It's taped so you can see it whenever you get home. Uh, we know that prayer changes things. And if you want to change a change in your life or in the lives of those you know, come and join us on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. We have a Zoom prayer call. It's the same number that you were using today if you were on Zoom. Rehearsal for the Tri-City Choir. Can we give the Tri-City Choir a hand raise? <laughs> will take place on Saturday, July 3rd. 31st at 5 o'clock at Sowers because we will be at Sowers next Sunday. Please know that you must attend rehearsals. <clears throat> I need some Please know you must attend rehearsals if you want to sing on Sunday. Now, y'all act like y'all don't know. Y'all know back in the day if you come step strutting up in the choir stand on Sunday and you had not been to rehearsal on Saturday, they sit your happy kids in the pews, not in the choir office. How many of you remember that? Uh -huh. So if you're not rehearsing on Saturday, don't think you're going to strut up on choir stand on Sunday because you're not. So choir rehearsal is the 31st at 5 p.m. Um, we are asking everyone who, who can or who wants to sing to sing, come out on Saturday 5 o'clock. Um, as we move into August, our 10 a.m. services uh, we'll have live services starting next Sunday the 1st. Uh, we will take place at Sowers. All are welcome. Uh, we are also still looking at the at anything that comes out from the county or the state about how we're going to handle the uh, Delta variants. But as of right now, we are going to be having live service full throttle on August the 1st. Please remember National Lights Out on Tuesday the 3rd of August at Lula G. Scott Community Center. Uh, in Shadyside, the Tri-City Worship Committee is meeting at 7 p.m. on Thursday the 5th on Zoom. All those who have any connection with the worship, all those who have any connection with the worship should attend. On August 10th at 7 o'clock, we will have Zumba returning to the Tri-City Charge. Now you can come, now you cannot come with any excuses as to why you cannot exercise. It will be outdoors at St. Matthew's and it's open to any and everyone in our church and in the community. We have not stopped feeding the hungry. Our next Tri-City Charge Foods distribution will take place on Saturday, August 14th. Volunteers are needed. If you would like to come out and join the fun, contact Sister Tyra Dunson or Sister Cheryl Medicates. Please mark your calendar for our summer celebration of the goodness of God on at 10 o'clock on Sunday, August 29th at West River. Please mark your calendars. We're going to have a good time. We have we will have a joyful outdoor service followed by picnic, swimming, games, and fellowship. We will begin a sign-up sheet in the weeks to come. We want every member of the church to bring a friend. Again, August 29th, plan to be there, and we need you to sign up. So I know RSVP confuses some folks. So I'm going to say it like this. Sign up if you're coming. Okay? If you're coming, sign up when the sign-up sheet comes out. That way we'll know how many people are coming, and we can, we can make the food enough for everyone. Amen? Amen. Amen. 
Uh, we are now going to have our pastoral reflect reflections by Pastor Charlotte Boysaw. Praise, praise the Lord again, Tri-City. So good to see you. So good to see you this morning. Those of you here, those of you on Facebook, YouTube, we are glad that you are worshiping with us this morning. We have certainly had a mighty, mighty week. I miss Tyra. Miss Tyra? Oh, are we? Yes, yes, I'm just checking in with you for my conversation, are we? Okay, thank you, thank you. Well, as they're on their way, we had an awesome, awesome time at Vacation Bible School this week. Try to you were so proud of our children. We had about nine to ten children who were faithful, who came every day. And at the end of our presentation that we had on Friday, the question was asked, what was it about Vacation Bible School that you really, really enjoyed? And the answer was, for most people, arts and crafts was a big hit. <laughs> the, the idea of, of using their hands and making these different items to support their theme, the pool party, making a splash with Jesus. If you dive in with Jesus, your life will be much better, and the children learning that they can always call on the Lord at any time. And so we're going to hear from them a little later as they arrive. And as we journey with Vacation Bible School, with our theme of being thankful, our theme church of asking the question constantly, is God pleased with our praise? Is he pleased with our behavior uh, as Christians? And on Thursday, the women at Franklin had their women's anniversary. And the theme there was dealing with social justice. But it was interesting. It was social justice in terms of taking care of the earth. God has given us the authority and the responsibility to not only take care of ourselves, but to help others and to take care of our earth. So the question becomes, are we doing everything that we can to take care of the earth and to take care of others? As Pastor has talked about over the past few Sundays, loving thy neighbor as yourself and doing unto them when they are in need. And on Wednesday, as always, coming together in prayer to place as well. And so, as we always need to take care of our spiritual life, there's always also a need to take care of our physical body, taking care of the physical nourishment. And that took place on yesterday. For those of you who were able to stop by and get yourself a nice hot fried chicken dinner or fried fish, or if you put your order in early, you got crab cake and ribs. Okay, I, I, I didn't do that. So my husband and I, we missed out on the crab cakes and the ribs. But we certainly are enjoying the hot fried chicken and fried fish and the potato salad and macaroni and cheese. Oh my, oh yeah. Talk about, it was, it was, it's been and looking good. So thank you, thank you to all of those persons working in your ministry Amen. to uplift the name of Jesus. And that's what we're talking about, Tri-City, coming together as a body of Christ and uplifting the name of Jesus. And as it was mentioned earlier, Tri-City Mass Choir. Tri-City Mass Choir. Calling on all singers. So as a body, we bring our voices together to uplift the name of Jesus. Um, I have a wonderful list of songs I would love for us to do. 
I need some more, some more altos, some more tenors, and some more sopranos, some more altos, some more tenors, some more sopranos. Okay, I'm gonna keep going. Some more sopranos, some more altos, and some more um, tenors. So those of you, and I'm taking a survey, I understand work schedules, I do. I really do. And if the time isn't convenient for you, please come and see me so we can have a chat about this. Because we want to grow. And so those of you who are in your seats and making a joyful noise, if you want to come or ask me to come and be with us here on Sunday morning. And we're going to keep things going. We don't know what September is going to hold for us. As First Lady shared with us, with the very, we don't know. But what we do know as of today, that we have this opportunity to come together to uplift the name of Jesus in song. We have the opportunity to uplift the name of Jesus in the building. If you're on Facebook or YouTube, you're with us as well. So if you are able to, please come and join us as a body of believers as we up the name of Jesus. And remember for us to keep in our minds thanksgiving, loving one another, another <laughs> and is God happy with what we're doing in our ministry? Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. For this, uh, we're not going to have a selection by the choir, and right after the selection, we'll have our opening prayer, and immediately following the prayer, we will have our prayer response by the choir.
of men and women makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. Hallelujah. The good news is that if you have asked Jesus to be your Savior, if you have asked Jesus to be your Savior, you are a God with man or woman, and your prayers, your prayers have power. Let us pray. Father, the God of all, the God of all creation, in heaven, on earth, and under the earth, hallelujah, we bless your name, and we honor you for being the great God that you are. There is none like you, none before you, and there will be none after you. You are mighty in all that you do, and perfect in all of your ways. Hallelujah. We come, Lord God, because we must tell you all that is going on. We come first to say forgive us, because we have not done your will. We have heard the cry of the needy and we have ignored them. We have kept doing things the same old way, the way that you are not pleased with, because your, this way that we are doing it is not meeting the needs of the people. It's not meeting the needs of the community. We are not saying about the orphan or the widow. We have been too insular, Lord God, about how we care for things. Open our hearts, open our minds, so that we can do what it is that you have called, purpose, and set out for us to do. Father, we are grateful because you've chosen us. You've chosen us to feed the hungry. You've chosen us to put clothes on the backs of those who have no clothes. You've chosen us, Lord God, to see about the children. You've chosen us, Lord God, to break the bread of life in the ears of those who do not know you. You've chosen us, Lord God, to be more than anyone ever thought we would be. Not because of what we've done, but because of who you are. We ask, Lord God, that you undergird us with your power and your might and your word as we go forth to do what it is that you told us to do. Father, we pray. we pray for our nation. We pray, Lord God, for our president, our vice president. We pray, Lord God, for the Congress. We pray for the Senate and the Republicans, and we pray for the House and the Democrats. We pray, Lord God, that they can, you can somehow bring them together to act like real adults who are really running a country. Father, everything they need to know is in your word or in a kindergarten class. They need to learn how to get along for the sake of the country. Father, help them. Lord, we pray for our governor. And we pray, Lord God, for everyone who sits in the state senate. We pray, Lord God, that they would come to know who you are so that they can come to know how to govern correctly. Father, we pray for teachers and for teachers' aid. So we pray for health care workers. We pray for for first responders. We pray, Lord God, for those who in the face of everything going on still have to do their job and they still have to be up front. We pray, Lord God, that you would cover them and keep them and hold them close to you, Lord God. We pray, Father, for our families and our friends. We pray that if they haven't gotten the COVID vaccination, that they will because you understand what it really means. You know what you're doing in the midst of this, Lord God. Let them understand, hallelujah, that you have provided a way of protection and that you, Lord God, have allowed everything to happen just the way you had purposed it to happen. Father, we pray for our pastor and our assistant pastor. We pray, Lord God, for every church in the Tri-City Charge. And we pray, Lord God, for the members of the Tri-City Charge. We pray, Father, that we will come out of our own way of thinking in our own way of doing things, in our own traditions that won't bring souls to you. We pray, Lord God, that we are able and willing to move into the new. Hallelujah. That we are willing to do whatever it takes to please you. And that we are willing, Lord God, to move forward in the things that maybe we don't understand, but we know that it's being led by you. We pray for our pastor, Lord God. You have given him a huge responsibility of three churches and all the souls in those churches. 
Father, give him the level of anointing necessary to fulfill the job you've given him. And our assistant pastor as well, Lord God, to fulfill the job you've given her and their families, Father God. We pray, Lord God, for every family that is represented by the tribes of the charge, every ailment, every hurt, every pain, every difficulty, every financial need, our glory, everything, Lord God, that we might be in need of, meet us at our point of need today in the name of Jesus. Father, for this service have your way. Do what you want to do in here, and we will just be glad you did it. Father, we are grateful that we can just come and tell Jesus all of our problems. We don't have to carry these burdens alone. Father, already. Thank you, Jesus. We are grateful, Father. And we give your name all the honor, all the glory, all the praise, and it is in your son, precious Jesus' name, we do pray and say amen.
Father's children. I actually will be reading Leviticus 19, 16 through 18. Do not go about spreading slander among your people. Do not do anything that endangers your neighbor's life. I am the Lord. Do not hate a fellow Israelite in your heart. Rebuke your neighbor frankly so you will not share in their guilt. Do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against anyone among your people, but, but love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Come on. Is the word of God for the people of God. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, church. Praise I'll be reading Matthew the 22nd from the 34th to 40th. When the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to Solomon, they was gathered together. Then one of them, which was the lawyer, asked him a question and tempted him, and saying, Master, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God, with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. May the Lord add the blessing to the reading of his holy word. Amen. We will now have a selection by the Mass Choir and follow immediately following the selection. Immediately following the selection will be our sermon by our pastor, Reverend Wong. At this time, we are ready to hear from our VBS member who came and participated in Vacation Bible School um, all week. And so she's just going to share a little bit about the memory verse and what it meant to her. Amen? Amen. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Ariana, and this week I participated in Vacation Bible School. So this upcoming week, we learned different lessons based on the lessons that Jesus taught in the Bible. The first day was based on, <laughs> well, so one, of the, um, one of the lessons was how Jesus talked to a woman, and, she, and he wasn't supposed to, because apparently Jesus and the tribe of this woman weren't supposed to interact, and the woman made a few mistakes and had many lessons, and Jesus offered her eternal water, which meant it was a gift of eternal life, and we also learned about how when Jesus and the disciples were on a boat, and all of a sudden a great storm hit. And Jesus was sleeping while the storm was hit. And the disciples came to him frightened. And they asked him, they woke him up, and Jesus calmed the storm. And they asked him, Why are you so why aren't you so afraid? And Jesus said, 
why are you so afraid? And our memory verse was from Acts 319. Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord.
real busy this week. Um, and, and that's the way I like it. You know, I, I think that the church should be doing things every day. Amen. I, I mean, all, all that we do. Um, and, and we should be there, you know, vacation Bible school was rolling, and, um, and, and the, the women of white celebration Franklin were rolling. Um, and then we had um, the fish fry, and that's really a fellowship that we meet so many people in the community that came by. I want to thank all the women. All the women uh, who, who worked yesterday, <laughs> if you can, stand up. <laughs> stand up. Come on. Stand up. Stand up. So uh, it, it is truly a blessing, amen, a blessing to be able to, to come together as a Tri-City Charge, to come together um, and, and bring more people to the table, amen, uh, so that we can do some great things. We had some vendors out there in the yard sale, amen, and uh, things were just great. So, so God is good and, and more than worthy to be praised, and I thank everybody uh, who was a part of that, amen, and including those, all those who came and got your dinners and, and things like that. We're going to be eating on that for quite a while, but God is good. Amen, because everything was delicious as always. Uh, there is a word um, from the Lord this morning, amen. I just need for y'all to pray with me. Y'all going to pray with me this morning? Yeah. Amen, amen. And I appreciate that. So we've had challenges, right? We've had the challenges. Is God pleased challenge? We had the thankful challenge. Amen. See, how much we're thankful for. There will be another challenge. Don't leave without getting it this morning. Amen. 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 I got to keep y'all busy because, you know, I just want to make sure that you're focused on, on those things that the Lord would have for us to do. Amen? And so, uh, so just pray with me. I'm going to give you a, a scenario. Uh, the scenario is, uh, is Malcolm. Uh, Malcolm was uh, doing his normal jog in the evening near his neighborhood. But he was feeling good this evening. It was cool. And so he decided that he was going to run a little bit farther and go down some streets that he had never gone down before. He, he was less than a mile from his house, and he was feeling good, and he was rolling when, a, when an old truck pulled up next to him as he ran. And then the, the window of the truck rolled down, and there was an angry-looking white man looking at Brother Malcolm, and he said, you need to go home! Get out of my neighborhood! But Malcolm was just looking, and he kept running, he said, let me cross the street, and so he crossed the street and he kept running, but the truck uh, continued to, to follow him and yell at him, and the man tried to spit at him out of the window, and Malcolm kept running, and then he heard, pow, pow! Malcolm hit the ground. As he hit the ground, he looked up, and he saw the man laughing, and the man hit the accelerator of his truck, and he turned around to see Malcolm, but he did not see the tree. So he crashed his truck into the tree. Malcolm got up slowly. He walked over and he saw that the, the car, had, the truck had hugged that tree and the windshield was smashed and the, the man had, had a, a big scar across his head. He looked unconscious and Malcolm had a decision to make. Malcolm will live right down the, the street had a decision to make about his neighbor. And so I want to ask you, what would you do? Huh? I'm not going to have a show of hands this morning. But, but I, I want it to be on your mind. What would you do? Would you help your neighbor? I'm going to tag this sermon, Neighborly Love Redefined. Neighborly Love Redefined. Let's pray. Lord, we just give you glory this morning. 
Oh, Lord, we're thankful for your presence in this place. The Holy Spirit, we appreciate you stopping on by St. Matthew's this morning. Now, Lord God, it's time for your people to hear from you. I declare that I am nothing more than your mouthpiece this morning. So, Holy Spirit, pour into me that I might pour into your people. I ask that, Lord God, you would till the soil so that the seeds that you would have me plant today will fall on good soil. And we will give you the glory and the honor and all of the praise. In the awesome name of Jesus, we pray and say, Amen. And so the question is, if you were in Malcolm's running shoes, smoke is beginning to billow up in the truck, and he's looking at this guy. Now, now everyone here, if I ask you, what should you do if you've been listening to the series Motivated by Love, and, and if you have, have participated in the weekly challenges, your answer should be quick. We must answer the question, is God pleased? We, we must be thankful to be alive and, 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 and for all that God has done. But would you help this man in the truck who cussed at you, who spit at you, and maybe shot at you, but he's your neighbor? What would you do? Maybe this will help. Jesus was asked the question, who is my neighbor? And, and Jesus replied, a man was going down the road from Jerusalem to Jericho when he fell into the hands of robbers. They stripped him of his clothes and beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest who happened to be going down the same road and when he saw the man, he passed on the other side. And so too a Levite, when he came to the place and saw the man, he passed on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and he bandaged, it, bandaged his wounds, poured oil and wine on his wounds, and then he put the man on his donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day, he took out two denarii and gave it to the innkeeper. And he said, look after him, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. And Jesus asked the man, which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robber? And the expert of the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. And Jesus replied, go. And do likewise. And that was from Luke 10, 30 through 37. So, so I, I want you to, to, to catch the lesson this morning. As disciples of Jesus Christ, what we need to understand, what I talk about a lot, is the definition of words in the world are very different than the definition for those who are in the kingdom of God, those who are saved. But the, the words don't mean the same. And so as we look at the word of this morning, neighbor, we see that our dictionary says a person that is living to us or a person close to us or next door. The word neighbor in the Greek is plesion, P-L-E-S-I-O-N, and it means someone who is near. The word in Hebrew, reya, which is R-E-Y-A, it means someone that you have an association with. And so Jesus is, uses this parable because he needs to redefine the word neighbor for these people and for us too. Let's get into this parable. But the Bible begins, it says in, in verse 30, it says a man was going down, uh, down from Jerusalem to Jericho. So let me give you an idea of what this really means. So Jerusalem uh, was the city on the hill. Jerusalem sat 2,500 feet above sea level. Jericho was 825 feet below sea level. So in order to make the walk, which was an 18 mile walk from Jerusalem through the Judean desert down to Jericho, you were basically descending 3,300 feet. 
In other words, if you, if you can see a 33-story building, they walked, that was the, that was the descent that they had to take and just roll. So when we, when we went to uh, Jerusalem, and, as, as you go down to the Red Sea, and the Red Sea, which is real close to Jericho, is the lowest place on earth. But you can look on the mountains and you can see this road that they used to walk. And I tell you the truth right now, ain't no way I'm going to walk on that road. I'm talking about the road was narrow. It was no more than 16 inches wide. And it was twisty and it was rocky and it was dangerous. So when Jesus mentioned that he was on the road from Jerusalem to Jericho, everyone who was listening did like this here. Uh-oh. Because they knew something bad was going to happen because this was a notoriously dangerous road. And in fact, in fact, there was a spot on this road that was called the Way of Blood. Because there were so many people who got killed and who got robbed and who got messed up on this road. Amen? But you see, I, I want to make a connection. Because you see, we, many of us have traveled down a similar road. You see, I, I'd like to think that this man was a lot like us because we have been on this dangerous, notorious road that is called life. More than a few of us have fallen on hard times and many of us have fallen into the hands of the robber. I believe it's called Satan. Because in John 10, 10 it says he comes to kill, to steal, and destroy. I think that's what happened to the man who was on the road. And you see, what you have to understand is I believe that there's more than a few of us. I need for you to get your head around this road we've been traveling on. Because some of us had our future stolen. Some of us had our dreams stripped away. Some of us had our confidence and our pride and our hope beaten down. No, the road this man was on is not an unfamiliar road for many of us. Many of us have walked this road and we have been let all oh, come on Holy Spirit. Y'all praying with me. There's been more than two of us who've been in here who've been left by the side of the road. We might have made a wrong turn. We did something wrong. Hallelujah. And the enemy came. Wanted to take us out right there. Beat us up. Oh man, I've been having conversations with folks, and, and here's what you find out. You find out that, that the one thing that happens is that as we who grow up in the church, and so how many of y'all, how many of y'all in the church all your life? Just, just raise your hand. Amen. I mean, we've done all our lives. And then we hit about 18, 19, huh? And then they get out of my parents' house. Like my boy, I should have used to say, I want to be free, y'all. <laughs> yes, it did. And we get out and, and, and we forget about we, we leave the church because we grow. Yeah. Do anything we want to do. Huh? Get our own place. Woo -hoo. Huh? Y'all remember? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Do I need to take it back? Uh, say no, I don't even want to do it. But, 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 but we understand that, 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 that as, we, as, we, as we go back, what happens, there is a period of time when we drift away from the church. Amen? And do anything we want to do. And we get on the same road that this man was on. Because once you leave the church, you are positioning yourself to be beaten and stripped and left for dead. Oh, I need somebody to know what I'm talking about this morning. But the Bible says, you know, the Bible says, train them up in the way that they should go. And then it says, but eventually. Huh? You see, if you plant those seeds as children, eventually. Huh? And so here is our man laying on the road, and the Bible says he's half dead. And then, here comes the priest. So a priest is one who worked in the temple. The priest was like the pastor. Make the assistant pastor. <laughs> the priest is the one that knew the law. The priest is the one who knew about compassion. But as he came down the road, he said, mm, come on, Holy Spirit. The man would have recognized the priest because of the priestly garments that he wore. And so as he laid there, could hardly see, he 
saw the priest and he said first that everything's gonna be alright. The church folks have arrived. But the priest looked at the man, went up to the other side of the road, and kept on going. Now, I'm sure the priest had a reason for doing that. But the, 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 I believe it's the Leviticus 21 where it says that as a priest, you are not supposed to touch anybody who might be dead. And so the priest had an excuse. We all got excuses. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. Oh, but 
Jesus had a word for him. Jesus uh, said, look at here, look at here. Here was this Samaritan. And, and the Samaritan, the Bible says, uh, took pity on the man. The Samaritan did not care if he was a Jew. The Samaritan, the Samaritan did not care if he was a Gentile. The Samaritan looked at the situation and said, this man needs help. And so, so here we are. And the Samaritan, he went above and beyond. I mean, the, the church folks wouldn't even tell them to run. Church folks might have known you. They walked on by. Well, if you see me walking down the street. Samaritan was Jesus. How many people are glad that when you were on the side of the road? How many people were you were down and out? How many people were the world and beat you up? How many people were the world and knocked you down? How many people were you were bleeding and hurting and crying? Hallelujah. Are you mad that Jesus did not pass you by? By. Your relatives pass you by. Your preacher pass you by. Aren't you glad that when you call on the name of Jesus, do I have anybody who calls on the name of Jesus? And see, here's what I know that when you first call him, he may not come. Now, 
Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, Jesus will not go on by. Come on, give him a hand. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus doesn't care what color you are. Jesus doesn't care what color you are, how, bad, how many bad names you call me. He doesn't care if you spit at me. Jesus doesn't care if you shoot at me. The loving kindness and compassion this world needs can be found in a Jesus that no matter what we have done, yes. 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 Woo! Yes. and no matter what we continue to do, Don't expect anything back. 
That is the concept that breaks all the molds of what we do. Because in this world, it's like, I do for you, you do for me. But God said, no, no, no. What did Jesus do? Huh? He died on the cross for us. Amen? While we were yet sinners, He died for us. And our response, not that we have to do it, but we should be so thankful. We should be so joyous that God woke us up, that God saved us, that God turned our lives around. In the name of Jesus, yes. Give Him a hand praise. Those of you at home, give God a hand praise. Because He did not have to do it, but for His grace and His mercy. Ain't no telling where we would be. I'd be, I'd be like the man on the side of the road looking for church folks. So what did our boy Malcolm do? I'm going to channel you. Come on, come on. What would you, just, just think it. Just put it in your mind. What would you do? What would you do? Ooh. Ooh. So I thought, I would love to tell you that Malcolm did all he could to pull the man out of the car. I would love to say that Malcolm demonstrated the compassion of a Samaritan, but he did not. Malcolm was mad. Malcolm really wanted to stay and watch this man burn. Malcolm, in the midst of his anger and fear, he did dial 911. And let the authorities know about the crash. And, but after he did that, he continued on his run. Hearing the sirens along the way. I guess Malcolm never read Matthew 5 and 44. He said, but I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. You see, we have to do things differently, church. If there was a line of people, I, I pray that, that, that there would be one of the church folks that would do what they could do to pull this man out of the truck because that is the action that would please God. But it's not easy. It is not easy because just like the Samaritans and the Jews, uh, we have some problems with some folks that live near us. Amen? Amen. We have some bad attitudes and there are things that we will not do, but God is saying, look at here, number one, so, so, so the process is this, number one, we need to love each other.
This is the same I'm going to get. See, see, we got to love each other. We got to love people in our church. Ooh, come on, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit said, we have to forgive people in our church. Because they hurt you. If you didn't say nothing to them, they didn't even know they hurt you. And now, Pastor, I can't be on that committee because some of us are because I'm that committee. And then she said, so I saw something. What did she say? That's about 1992. <laughs>
I want you to do something special. Do something surprising. Do something that will cause your neighbor to ask, why are you doing this? And, and you know the neighbor. You know the neighbor. That neighbor. Yeah, that's the one. Huh? That's the one. And so, so, so this week, I, I need for you to send a card. Send some flowers. Take them a meal. You all right, brother? The love your neighbor shouts. Can y'all do that? Huh? We got three people. I need four. I need four. I need four. I need five. Is it that hard? Okay, so if you can't do it on one thing, I, I guess. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, thing. Holy Spirit, says, look. If it's going to taste some prayer and meditation, so maybe you're going to have a little neighbor on Wednesday. Because you're going to need Monday and Tuesday just to get your mind prepared. The Lord. Because see, the thing is, not only do you know that neighbor, but God knows that neighbor too. Huh? So on this one, you can't fake it to make it. Huh? You might as well get in the kitchen and make it. Make it a cake. Make it to cook and do. Do something for that neighbor that shows this unbelievable, incredible, and they know they've been treating you bad. But if you make the decision that you're going to bless them, that you're going to show the love of Christ to them, that one in that cubicle that you just don't like, for those of you who are at home, <laughs> my wife is giving me a look. Will you help me out, brother Paul? Will you help me out? Will you help me out? Will you help me out? No? The love your neighbor challenge, I believe we can do it. We've already talked about is God pleased. Yes. And we had a whole week of, of trying to figure out how we need to change our lives and change the things that we do to please God. Are you thankful? We spent a week saying, thank you, Lord. Now it's time to do something. Huh? With your new self. Uh, you see, what's wrong with you? The, 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 the neighbors are bad. That's what you weren't saying. And now you're saying, and I believe it, I believe it. I, I read somewhere. In Corinthians 8, Corinthians 5, 17, uh, uh, old things are passed away. So now we need some new, new creature, neighborly love. The love, you just, just remember uh, what the Samaritan did. And remember what Jesus did for you. Because see, somebody in your family needs Jesus. Somebody in your family who you gave up on. Somebody in your family who when they left, you talked about it. You see, they may be walking around, but in reality, in their heart and in their life, they are laying by the side of the road because Satan has beat them and stripped them and left them half dead. And God is saying, that's who you need to love on. That's who you need to call. Ooh, come on, Holy Spirit. See, see, prayer isn't enough, it's your presence. Prayer is good, but it is your presence. Hallelujah. We need, to, we need to love our neighbors and show our neighbors who this Jesus is that we talk about. That he's just not a mystery. That he is just not for us. And we do that by how we demonstrate. You know, but the agape love is, is, is the love that is shown through action. Our gratefulness is gratefulness that is shown through action and how we love our neighbor. It's not that we just want to pray for it, but they need to see you in action. 
These are the things that turn communities around and they turn churches around. Because we are dealing with those who don't know Jesus. And we can share. Because see, if you do something, if you brought somebody to me and ask you why, oh my goodness, that's like opening the door. That's the only why. Jesus. I, I was hurting. I was in despair. Jesus. I was lost. Jesus. I was dirty. Jesus. I was drunk. Jesus. I was high. Jesus. Woo. Pick me up and he'll pick you up too. So I need for you to know that we all look so good this morning. We've been on that road. We've been on the Jericho road. And we can tell you that our Jesus. Woo, just somebody just say, Jesus. Woo, see, just the word invokes power. Somebody say, Jesus. Just the word, hallelujah, fires us up. And we know we are children of the most high God. Can you say one more time? Just say, Jesus. How many are thankful that this Jesus is in your life? Stand up on your feet, feeling my hand raised of this Jesus. Charge! 
entire review come please? While she was currently working two jobs and doing online classes, um, she worked hard to accomplish her goals. She will be attending Anne Arundel Community College in the fall to pursue her degree in interior design. She appreciates all the love, support, and has asked for continued prayers as she embarks on her next stage of her life. And Deasia couldn't be here this morning. Um, both her and Brianna um, have jobs, so they're working. Um, and could not be here today. Um, our second graduate is Brianna Dove. Brianna wants uh, you to know that she is the proud mom of her son, Derek, who has nothing but motivated her to succeed in every aspect of her life. In May of 2021, she obtained her AA degree in early childhood and special education while working as a pre-K teacher and an assistant director of Joy Kids Learning Center. This fall, Brianna will be attending Eastern Kentucky University for her Bachelor's of Social Work with plans to become a school social worker and eventually open her own practice to provide therapy and counseling for children with and young adults. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Our third graduate who also could not be here, um, he's away at basketball camp, Dion Devonte Hammond. Dion graduated from Mon Monmouth University, which he attended on a full basketball scholarship with a BS in health and physical education. During his senior year in college, Dion was one of the only two Hawks named all met twice. 2021 to 2020 and 2020 to 2019. He was named the Paul Gaffney Male Athlete of the Year 2021 and 2020. Hammond was the unanimous selection to the All MAAC first team in this season and was honored by the NABC as an all-district first time. He set program mark for May three corners this year and became one of five Hawks at the Division I level to top the 1,600 point mark. Dion has selected Potter's Sports Group as his agent in pursuit of his lifelong dream of playing in the NBA. After his basketball career ends, he then plans to use his degree to become a professional athletic trainer under the National Athletic Trainers Association. Dion is currently in basketball camp in Indiana in pursuit of his goals. So for us to come to the second time. And I do want to say also congratulations to um, our other uh, children who have been promoted. Um, we have some who have gone from pre-K to first grade, some from elementary to middle school, some from middle school to high school, and they you know, managed to do all of these things while we were learning virtually. So we just want you to know that we appreciate you all. Um, we will continue to pray for you. We will continue to push you and support you through our prayers and our support and love. Congratulations.
as tax that comes to Benedict, um, I, I receive a note, there's bread in the back after service, so please come and get me or want any bread, please go on to the back and get it after service. Church say amen. amen. Church say amen one more time. Amen. Hallelujah. Can we just give the Lord one more hand praise? Thank you for everyone who came out today. Amen. Did y'all enjoy church this morning? Amen. God bless. God just has great plans for us. Amen. And in all of the sermons and everything that we do is preparing us for God, what God would have us to do outside the walls of the church. Amen. So often we do a great job of taking care of ourselves, uh, but it is those who are on the outside that need Jesus. Amen. And so we need to continue to show them Jesus. We do a lot. I mean, we do a lot with the food distribution. We do a lot with the, with the baby pantry. We do a lot with all of the, the various things that we do. But we, we can do more. There's more to be done because there's more lives to be touched. Amen. And so I will continue to not only challenge you that, that we can become better, but challenge you as we go out into the community to find out what do the people in this community need. Amen. I mean, that's really what we, we're, we're about. We're, we're like a hospital. It's like, what do you need? What is it that we need? And God will provide whatever we need to help those who need. Amen. God will provide. God will provide. I, I believe that we've, we've all seen it. We've all seen it. And, and God's not going to stop. In fact, the more you ask, the greater God gives for, to us. Amen. So, so when, when, when I begin to ask you to do things that you think are crazy, it's only because I'm trying to stretch your understanding of who God is and what God can do. We, did, we, just, we get so satisfied. Like, oh, I'm so glad God did a little bit. God's like, well, I want to do more. God is great. Standing all over the church. Amen. Standing in your homes. Amen. Hallelujah. Can we give the choir a hand praise? Amen. Can we give our musicians a hand praise? Amen. The work our assistant pastor is doing with our choir. Give her a hand praise. All the work that she's doing. And see, she gets all this stuff from me. She's like... <laughs> Like, who's going to do that? Like, oh, I think it's you. Um, and I'm thankful that, that she has been agreeable so far. <laughs> to all the things that, that the Lord drops on my spirit. I mean, he does that a lot. Um, and, uh, but we can do these things. You know, they, I, truly, I believe. You know, the, the Bible says that we can do all things through Christ. So do we believe it? But our God is more than worthy to be praised. Amen. I pray that according to the riches of his glory, that you might be strengthened through his might and his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints uh, what is the width and length and depth and height to know the love of Christ which passes all understanding that you may be filled with the fullness of God. And now to him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly more than we ask, think, or imagine according to the power that is already at work within you. To him be glory in the church by Jesus Christ to all generations forever and ever. And the church says, Amen. Amen.